Welcome to Algorithms with Professor Califf. Today I want to talk to you about the basics of recursion, an important concept in both programming and computer science in general. What is it? In essence, it's just a function calling itself. That could be direct, where the function actually calls the same function, or it could be indirect, where a function calls another function and then that one turns around and calls it. The first thing we have to think about when we start working with recursion is how to stop. So when we think about writing loops, we know that we have to make sure that they're eventually going to stop or we end up with infinite loops, which are bad things. Recursion not stopping is also a bad thing and it will typically crash your program. We need to come up with a base case. This is also sometimes called the terminal case or the terminating case, the case where we stop. What this is, is the very simplest version of the problem, the one where we just know the right answer. Then we need to make sure that each time we make that recursive call, call this function again, we're modifying the parameters to that call from the one we're in right now, so that we move toward that base case. And we'll see an example of that in a minute. If we move away from the base case, then we're going to have the equivalent of an infinite loop, a recursion that just keeps going until it crashes the program. The basic structure of a recursive program is centered around that whole concept of the base case. So we're going to have a return type, as we typically do in a function, then the name of the function, then parameters, and generally, recursive functions are always going to have parameters because that's how you're going to control the recursion, how you're going to figure out, hey, I'm in the base case, I need to stop. Then we have an if and the base case condition. So how do we recognize that this is that simplest version of the problem? That's our condition. Then we're usually going to return a result of some kind, the base case result, but sometimes we do have void recursive functions, and so then we'll take the appropriate action for that base case. If we're not in a base case, then we're going to make a recursive call to the function with our new parameter values. So this is the typical structure of any recursive function. So let's think about an example problem that most people should be familiar with computing the factorial of a number. This is a nice example because the mathematical definition that we all learned for factorial is actually inherently recursive. So we only have to translate the math into programming. The factorial of zero or one is one by definition. So that's going to be our base case. This is the case where we just know the answer. Then the definition for the factorial of n for anything greater than one, and we're going to not worry about uh, negative numbers here. We're going to have n times the factorial of n minus one. So I want the factorial of nine, nine times eight times seven times six. But when we think about the definition of that, that's nine times the factorial of eight which is eight times the factorial of seven, which is seven times the factorial of six and so on. Let's translate this definition into Java code to see how it actually works when we get down and dirty in our recursion. So if we're going to do recursion, we need to have a recursive function. So we said we were writing factorial. So I'm going to make that long factorial. I'm going with long so that we have larger numbers available to us. And we'll make this public. And we have one parameter that is the number that we're trying to produce the factorial of. So there's our basic header. Then we're going to need to worry about the base case. We said that the case where we just know the answer is if we have zero or one. We're going to make an assumption here that we're not going to get negative numbers because factorial is not defined for negative numbers. We'll simply say if num is less than two, or we could say less 
Maybe we'll say less than or equal to one to make it a little bit clearer. If that's true, then we know the answer. That's the base case. So we're just going to return one. We have to figure out this recursive case. So we're going to return something. And we know we need to make a call to factorial. So we have factorial. And we know that we need to work toward the base case. So we've got to somehow make our num that isn't less than or equal to one get closer to one. Plus, we remember that our math definition said that factorial of n was n times the factorial of n minus one. So what we're going to do is to compute the factorial of num minus one. And then we want to multiply that result times num. And there we have our basic recursive function. Now let's see what actually happens when we try to use this. Long ants factorial. And we're going to just put a number in here to see what's happening. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a print just so that we have some results. We're going to make our function static. I've been doing too much C, C++ kind of things lately. Now we have our function. We have a call to it. I now want to see what happens as we go through it. So I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint here and start debugging this so we can see how it works. We're in this, we're going to make our call. So I'm going to step into our factorial. So num here is nine. And so that's not going to be less than or equal to one. So let's step over that. And then we're going to step into the factorial. Now notice we're in factorial again, but this time the local value is eight. And if we come take a look over here on this call stack, we're going to see there's two copies of factorial. So if we click on this one, we have num as nine. But if we click on this one, the one that we just called, num is now going to be eight. This is how recursion works, is we get multiple copies of the function with different parameter values. We were in the one with nine, then we called the one with eight. As we go through that, we're going to now call the one with seven. You'll see we have one more here. Then we're going to call the one with six and call the one with five and four and three. You can see we're just adding more and more here and two. And then we call the one with one. Now at that point, we actually have a base case. So we're going to go ahead and return one. And we're going to see that we step out of that and we're now in two and it says, okay, this gave us one back. And so it's doing the two times one. So as we move forward, we're going to be out of that one. So we did the return. It returned two and we have three now. So so we complete that call. We're going to end up, it returned six, two times three. And we now have four. And we see that we're now in the one with five and 24. And each time this is reducing. So all of these still exist. Now 120 times, and we multiply that by six. So now we have 720 and seven and 50, 40 and eight and 40,320 and nine. And then we get to our final answer of 362,880 at the end. And you can see we've gotten out of all our copies of factorial and now we can print.
and we get that answer. So this is the basic idea behind recursion. I encourage you to play with this. This is a concept that some people just sort of look at it and they go, oh, that's cool. Other people look at it and go, that is weird because it is kind of weird. And so you may have to play with it for a while before you get it. Try different things, play with this, be sure to use a debugger to step through and sort of watch what's happening when you do recursion. I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.